Welcome to Ready Player One. Today we're going to be sharing with you a recently released homebrew game on the NES, Haunted Halloween 85. And Haunted Halloween 85 was actually released in 2015 by the company Retrotainment. This horror 2D platformer was inspired by all of the great games of the 8-bit era. We first found out about this game at PRGE 2015 where we subsequently got our limited run PRGE copy. The PRGE edition was a great cartridge only, with the green cartridge complete in box edition being made available the following year with the Haunted Halloween 86 Kickstarter. We've reviewed this game before but decided to dive in a little bit deeper after watching some reviews from our close friends like Russ Lyman and Empty Shark 7. After speaking with the Retrotainment crew for the third straight year at PRGE, we decided that this game needed a little more of our attention. Let's take a look and see what this game has to offer. Oh, that's all I wanted. I thought she was actually playing. No. Hello? Right. You get you turn green, oh, right? And you're dying. Yeah. yeah. It's a little funny. No, I'm kind of scared because, <laughs> like, last time I came in, I, like, broke everything. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, you missed it? Oh, there you go. And you. Oh, what? See, Did you see that? It, it, it like glitches. So we just got done playing Haunted Halloween 85. What did you think the second time around? Uh, I felt like it was a lot easier this time and like I noticed more things about the game than I did the first time. Like I paid more attention to the details and things like that. The first time I was probably yelling at you half the time <laughs> not to fall in the pits. So I can understand why you could actually like take a look at the details this yeah. time around. Um, so what did you think of what did you think of the controls? It was pretty basic. So like the the arrows was like to go forward and back. Right. The you jumped with A and you punched with B. So pretty straightforward. Yeah, it was yeah. just like those three, like the most basic. So I think the controls for an NES game, obviously these guys, you know, they had a lot more time to work on it and they were, they were working, you know, knowing what they did bad and what they did good yeah. with the original games, you know, yeah. back when, uh, on the original run for the NES. So I think that the controls were done uh, pretty darn well for, yeah, a, for a platformer um, on the Nintendo system. Now, um, I really liked the the music for this game. I thought it was, in particular, really good. I really like, obviously, the controls. I like the colors. I, I kind of like how the birds kind of mix in. With, with the a, sky. With the sky, and then it just makes it's it... Just it, the it, eyes. it adds a little bit of difficulty, but it's, it's part of the fun. Yeah. Um, it's not, like, unplayable. What else did you like about the game? Was there any other little details that you noticed along while, while you were running maybe down the movie hallway or something? <laughs> yeah, um, like all the 80s movies, like the details about the 80s, mm -hmm. like um, the Goonies, Ghostbusters. Oh yeah, Ghostbusters uh, was in there. Friday the 13th, yeah. things like that. They even have like the actual movie poster. Oh yeah, it's yeah. It's not 100% clear, but you know, you can tell what it is. Yeah, the, definitely on, on uh, Friday the 13th, or Nightmare on Elm, Elm Street. Street. Yeah, you can tell that I was there. And yeah, like, that is really cool. The, the screen, like when you're walking across the screen. Right. That, that was probably like the best feature. So there is a part where you are walking uh, across the screen and it and it does like the backlighting. I don't know, and it turns your, your character into like a, a shadow. shadow. So it looks really good. 
Um, I'm not sure if, if you'll be able to see that with the gameplay that we share with you guys, but um, if you guys do want to get this game, you can find it by searching for Retrotainment on Facebook, or even if you Google it, it's uh, pretty easy to find. Like we stated before, our friend Russ Lyman and MT Shark 7 they've done a review. If you guys want to watch their review, uh, maybe you can find something a little bit different that they have to say. Uh, go ahead and check them out. I'll actually leave a link in the description if I remember uh, to each one of their videos. Is there anything that you didn't like about the game? Um, I don't know if they, you would call them glitches, but sometimes like you'd press the jump button and it wouldn't jump. Yeah. Or or you would jump to like a panel and for some reason you never landed. Yeah, it just kind of like fall through. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure if that's just um, the controller maybe not, mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe not reacting. Yeah, like uh, how it's supposed how to. How it's supposed to uh, on time or those jumps, sometimes they're like pixel perfect. You know, where you land just on the wrong pixel and you kind of fall through yeah. and, and it kind of pushes you. You It looks like you land on the edge and it kind of pushes, pushes you, you off. Yeah. Um, other than that, and actually I was fighting a boss or a bird and it glitched out and it was kind both. of on it me. Was both. And it, it was, was like the, the monkey oh, boss oh. and then a bird just like stayed there but it was already dead. So the monkey wasn't really a glitch but I think it was like a, a, an unfair spot that I found where I kept punching and he would fall off the ledge, jump at me, I'd punch him and he, he'd continue to he fall off the ledge. He would just kind of like stay, mm -hmm. like he couldn't go past that point. Yeah so uh, that was a pretty easy easy boss to beat which is kind of going to lead me into the closing statement where the game is a slightly difficult but at the same time, just when you think it's a little too difficult, you start uh, beating the areas. You start yeah. getting used to the game, the repetition, and you just start doing better you in general. You kind of like start to learn what to do and what not to do. Yeah. And, uh, like if there's that glitch where you fall, you you know how to fix. Yeah, it you to figure work. out how to play the game yeah. better. But overall, I would you know I would give it pretty darn near a perfect score yeah. as far as like if you want to throw a number of uh, between one and ten. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would give it a pretty like, solid 8 or 9. Nine. I mean, I really had fun with it. Uh, we did stop at the Scarecrow boss. We, we beat the four levels. Well, the Scarecrow boss is the fourth level. Yeah. But uh, we just kind of gave up after the first continue. Almost had it. Finally figured <laughs> it out. Um, there is one one extra mechanic that's added to the controls where you can do an uppercut if you press down and the punch awesome. button. I think if I would have done that from the beginning, we would have definitely, been it. yeah, it we would have beaten it for sure. But anyways, uh, thanks for joining us in this re-review of Haunted Halloween 85. Uh, we hope you guys enjoy the Ready Player One series. Until the next video, we'll see you later.